I've entitled this brief presentation, Poverty, Benefits and Work as the Road to Salvation, the Position of Children. And I want to cover um, four things very quickly. First, the material position of children in New Zealand, um, children as the group most likely to be in income poverty or material hardship of all the age groups in New Zealand currently. Secondly, the position of children in the benefit system and its role in alleviating poverty. Thirdly, work as a possible road to salvation. And finally, I want to make a suggestion about how we might know better if work is in fact the road to salvation and understand better the processes by which children's well-being changes through their career in the benefit um, work system. So first, income poverty and material hardship. And I should acknowledge my predecessor, Dr Cindy Kira, who in fact commissioned the bit of work that I'm drawing on here. Um, first, the material position of children in New Zealand. I've got four pieces of information about this. Um, let me start with some information from children themselves. In 2008, uh, my, the Office of the Children's Commissioner carried out a project looking at children and young people's perception of poverty in New Zealand. They used photos and drawings as well as words. And up on the screen are some of the things they said. Um, work is when you can't afford school uniforms, when there's a lack of books, um, when you can't do the things that your peers are doing, like school trips where you get left out, picked on, um, where there are feelings of worthlessness. The children were very perceptive um, uh, informants about the impact of poverty on their um, sense of being part of the group, part of the, the group of children. Another drew this drawing, poverty is about food on the table. And that leads me to my second bit of information, which is unashamedly an anecdote. Um, one of the first things I did when I was appointed to this job was to visit the Decile One school in West Auckland, out in Ranui. And the thing that um, struck me immediately was that the foyer of the school was full of food. There was uh, milk from Fontara, cartons of milk from Fontara. There was bread from Healthries. There was fruit from the taxpayer. The school was part of the, that decile one scheme, getting uh, fruit to school. All of that food was in the foyer to allow the staff to provide breakfast and lunch for significant numbers of their pupils and demand, they said, rose steeply in the two days prior to benefit payments. Providing food was just business as usual for the school. And I've reflected on that quite a lot uh, subsequently, and I've found myself wondering what our reaction as a society, as a community, and as a society would be if the foyers of Sprott House a rest home in Karori, or the enormous Malvina major retirement village were full of donated foodstuffs to alleviate food poverty amongst the residents. The third bit of uh, information I want to present to you about the material circumstances of children in New Zealand is this graph here, which comes from MST's analysis of household incomes. It shows what has happened to levels of uh, relative income poverty amongst different age groups over the past 25 years or so. The vertical axis is the percentage of different age cohorts that are below, below a well-established poverty line, which is 60% of the uh, median income, less a, um, a, an assessment for accommodation purposes, so it's the after housing cost, 60% of the median after housing cost disposable income. Um, so the vertical axis is the percentage going up there, 10%, 20%, 30%. And the horizontal axis is just the time series, um, starting in 1982 and finishing about 2008. The blue line, the top line, represents the proportion of children aged 0 to 17 below the income poverty line as defined in this data. And I want to make three points about this graph. The first is that children are in all data points but one, the group worst off 
the group most likely to be in income poverty. They have consistently been over twice as likely to be in income poverty as those aged 65 years and over. Secondly, it is clear from this graph that children were the age group in our population that bore the impact of the early 1990s recession and our policy responses to that that steep upward jump in the levels of poverty from something like 12% uh, in the uh, late 1980s to 35% in 1993-1994 reflects that. A, a big driver of that was in fact the benefit cuts in 1991, the infamous benefit cuts in 1991, and this is a, pardon the pun, a graphic illustration of the consequence of that for income levels for children in New Zealand. The third point is that government income support policy is in fact very important in determining how many children fall below this sort of poverty line. One can see that in the consequence of the benefit adjustments made in 1991, the cuts made in 1991, but you can see it in a more positive light in the right hand side of, uh, of the graph where from 2003 on there is quite a steady decline down to 2007. Um, that the analysis shows, the MSD analysis shows, is very much a consequence of working for families, the um, income support policy that is working for families. So these, these changes are a result of decisions that us adults have made. Uh, um, or our governments have made for us. There is other evidence that shows that poverty is much more prevalent in benefit dependent households than it is in working households. This too is a result made of decisions and you'll be, many of you will be well aware of the working for families policy that provides um, additional income assistance for working families compared with beneficiary families. So that's the third piece of information, that analysis of um, household incomes. The fourth um, again comes from good work done by the Ministry of Social Development in its analysis of material living standards. Um, since 2000 they've been gathering data about uh, material living standards in households in New Zealand. This is from the data gathered in 2008. So that li this living standards data reveals similar patterns to the income data, I think. Um, first, rates for children aged 0 to 17 are much higher than for older people, 4% um, below a, a threshold that the um, analysis sets for being an extreme hardship or um, severe hardship, I think. So the rates for children are much higher, the rates for beneficiary families are much higher than for working families, and Maori and Pacific Island rates are two or three times higher than that for the European and other population in New Zealand. So that's the first point I want to make really. An important part of the context of welfare reform in New Zealand is that children are the group, children aged 0 to 17 are the group most likely in our society right now and for, many, for several years before, for at least a couple of decades um, before, most likely to be in income poverty and most likely to be in material hardship. <coughs> 